I used vaping during my first COVID shutdown in March 2020 to finally give up cigarettes after 43 years of trying and failing by every other method. I don't vape huge amounts of smoke. My lungs feel better, I feel healthier, and my smoking cough is gone. After a lot of search online, I found that there are just 10 telehealth doctors registered to give prescriptions to over 600,000 current vapors. So my question is, why am I going to be forced to become either a criminal or go back to cigarettes? Because the bureaucratic systems created a monster that doesn't have the logistical capacity in place to scale when we hit ground zero. John, we'll go to you on that one. Oh, man, so many things he brings up. Well, first of all, he's going to get away with it, like, the, the, because the government can ban vapes from overseas, but it's like saying, oh, we're going to ban lipstick. Um, it's like, yeah, well, what actually are you going to do? Like, how are you going to stop it? And that's what... That's someone will find a way to bring it in. Well, someone who... Uh, I spoke to a guy who runs uh, the biggest vape empire in Australasia today before coming on, and that's what he said to me. He said when this October 1st happens where everyone's going, oh, my God, vaping's going to be banned, he's just going... He's saying, what are they going to do? It really is like saying you're going to ban lipstick, and it's like, how can you follow through on that? And I guess when it comes to it being uh, whether vaping is a health device or a health danger. That's where it gets, like, really confusing. So, because the thing that kills you in a cigarette is that it contains tobacco, tobacco generates tar, that's the tar kills you. Whilst in a vape, there's no tobacco leaf, so it doesn't generate tar. So, therefore, vaping people can say the most dangerous thing in a cigarette isn't in a vape. But then it becomes, well, you're, you're still inhaling other things like uh, propylene glycerol and nicotine and flavourings, and then it becomes, well, will there be other really bad health consequences because of that? So that's where it becomes really tricky in, in, in deciding. We were talking about language and the uses and trickery of language before. That, is that another example where the language and the words and the description used has been um, equally as obfuscating, <laughs> where it's actually been very clever in what it's hidden and what it's tried to promote with vaping? Um, yeah, and particularly uh, Philip Morris, where because what we're talking about before, which isn't a vape, it's a uh, heat stick, it's a cigarette. <laughs> but the way you, the way you heat it up is you stick it into this device, and that plugs into a wall. So Philip Morris can say it's an e-cigarette, even though it's totally different to a vape, because a vape you also plug into a wall, and you can say it's an e-cigarette. So sometimes. The, for instance, the British National Health Service, they came out in favour of vaping and they said, oh, we think e-cigarettes can help you get off cigarettes. And Philip Morris would go, look, all this good news about e-cigarettes. <laughs> Except the National Health Service made it really clear that when they were yeah. talking about e-cigarettes, they were talking about vaping. They weren't talking about this cigarette that you plug in a wall from Philip Morris. Yanis is back with us. Yanis, if you missed the question, it was a question about vaping, a man who's actually used vaping, he says, to successfully stop smoking, and he'd like to be able to continue doing it. I know you've got a particularly personal struggle with vaping. Not yourself, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Don't let my daughter hear you. Too late. She's watching. <laughs> I'm not so sure. She usually avoids shows in which I feature. Um, <laughs> look, if, 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 if vaping was something that was started by some small cooperative in association with the Australian Medical Association or some body of experts, you know, I would be interested to hear what they have to offer the world. But when the tobacco industry is behind that, it's clear what's going on. Uh, what we have is a situation where you know, once Philip Morris hit a wall of resistance from our democracies, then they moved on to the labyrinth of deception. They are finding other ways of doing damage to people's health in order to profit from it. Uh, so, you know, until vaping becomes uh, a, a small business, uh, health industry associated uh, enterprise, um, I'm really not going to look at them as anything other than as. Than, than a threat to young people and older people, for that matter. Have you managed to dissuade your daughter from, from vaping? Is she listening to her father, Yunus? How, how do I know? 
<laughs> How do I know? How does any parent know? <laughs> uh, in theory, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Just quickly from Rachel Doyle, uh, if anything you'd like to add there from a legal perspective? Oh, look, I think um, in uh, John's book, he makes the point very well that um, uh, Philip Morris have been um, <laughs> very clever here in shape-shifting. Uh, their, their devices are heat sticks when they shouldn't be cigarettes. They're an e-cigarette when that's what they need to be. They're a vapour when they need to be that. And it's the ingenuity that they've shown in working around the law. And when I was reading that part of John's book, I was reminded, of course, of a, another occasion on which tobacco companies have helped us learn new terminology. Um, British American Tobacco, of course, are, are famous because of some litigation in Victoria decades ago uh, that concerned their document retention policy, which was a euphemism, of course, for a decision made over a number of years to destroy documents that had been warehoused <laughs> between um, rounds of litigation. So it's not the first time that a tobacco company has helped invent new language. And in one sense, it's inevitable when laws are very... Um, finely written, someone will always want to work around them. On the other hand, it's enormously frustrating when the subject matter here pertains to people's health and what you want is clarity mm. and you want the substance um, to be adhered to rather than people escaping by dint of inventing new words. It's very quickly, John. If you want to know how brilliant Philip Morris are with words, is because uh, tar is a thing that kills you in a cigarette, this new heat stick doesn't contain tar. Mm -hmm. And that's because they've changed the word to tar to nicotine-free dry particulate matter. Huh. And just think of how brilliant that Works is. Works for me, John. And how <laughs> audacious that is that a cigarette is the most infamous nicotine product in the world and they've come up with a new word for tar that contains the expression <laughs> nicotine-free, which... So they've isolated the bit of the cigarette that doesn't contain nicotine and said, oh, that bit's nicotine-free, and now they can talk about the heat stick and throw in the term nicotine-free. It's wonderful. <laughs> I don't know what Orwell would make of any of this.